for Luke. Free with either a delicious and this whole cast. What's the difference between astral projection and time travel? I got a superhero snooping around here. the octopus spirit. I come against the squid spirit, that mind-binding spirit. I sever the tentacles of these spirits and command them to go now. I draw power! Church of Jesus Christ, stop whining about the attacks on your life by the prince of darkness and put on the whole armor of God in Ephesians 6. Attack, attack, and then attack again. Our mutant powers make us superior. You know, I could be in the 11th round, 12th round, right now, in the fight, fighting the good fight. You know, putting the devil on his plate, putting the devil in check. Can you determine the nature of the attacking mutant's powers? Formation and manipulation of ice. But storms in Africa. Mutant has been identified. Bonas Ice Man. Hey, friends all over the world. Dr. Keenan here. He is a doctor. Doctor? Of what? I'm sure the man has no academic standing whatsoever. I want to share with you uh, my serious dream. Hey, would you wake up already? My warning that I shared some time ago, a little bit about it. And how can you nap at a time like this? The jet's falling apart. We're going up against Magneto. And did I mention that the jet's falling apart? And uh, what I felt so impressed today that we need to do, especially now, more than ever before. More than ever before. So, um, I want you to hear me closely and then I'll share something with you that I think is really, really important toward the end of this message. So go ahead and tag a friend and share it. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll wait till I hear the message first, if it's okay. Um, yeah, tag a friend and share. Uh, I'll, I'll wait till I hear the message. I, I don't know what the message is. I'm not in the habit of sharing messages with people that I don't know, uh, you know, what the message is. Uh, so it's, it's a quirk of mine. Tag a friend and share. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll wait till I hear the message. Thank you. I'm just trying to type something here if I can. Go ahead and tag a friend and share. I'm not going to do that. And once you do, I want you to pay very close attention to what we're about to say. So tag a friend and then pay very close attention to what you're about to say. That. That sounds kind of backward, but you know, you're, you're the prophet, uh, you're the doctor. Okay. So about, I don't want to, I want to say three months ago. Okay. Three months ago, he got a message from the sovereign God of the universe to his people here on the earth. God gave him a message to give to us about three months ago maybe longer or maybe longer than three months ago um about three months ago or longer about three months ago or longer he, he doesn't remember the exact date uh when god the almighty god of the universe uh spoke to him you know just just another day in the life of uh the good doctor prophet person here I want to share two dreams with you that I had. The first one was actually this was a little bit less than three months. What well, was, was a little less than than three months? <laughs> yeah, it, it, it didn't make that big of an impression on him apparently when when God uh, spoke to him. Um, it was about the storm, and I posted a video about it on Facebook about the storm that was coming. And in the dream, there was like a blizzard covering the globe. It was covering everywhere. But you're freezing in your sleep again. 
and people were being frozen. Everybody was being frozen and everybody was running from this, this cold, this freeze. And I, I went into a house. What type of installation is that? And this is really interesting because even today I started to, I'm starting to get clarity on what it was all about. But I went into a house. Property is identified as a federal storage depot, restricted access. With a very popular healing minister and some other ministers and we were all inside the house. All right, the X-Men are back. And when we got inside the house, we were trying to figure out how to keep out the cold. Time to kiss this door goodbye. But this cold was, I mean, it was just severe. Anything it touched froze instantly. And so I said, man, okay, what are we gonna do? And we're all looking at each other. And as we look, we see a furnace. And the furnace was an old cast iron furnace from like back in the day, from like the 1930s. And uh, so when I, when I looked at the furnace, they said, we need to turn it on. And we turned on the furnace. And when we turned the furnace on, Whoa, this is getting way too hot for me. What ended up happening was that the furnace began to melt the ice. And I, I shared a video about this a little while ago. And one of the things that I talked about, the blizzard being compromised, the storm that was coming. But it also goes back to a dream that I had about COVID that I shared about six months ago. We'll return after these messages. The church in America is going to suffer so terribly. And we laugh now, but they will come after us and they will come after our children. They will close the net around us while we are playing soccer mom and soccer dad. While we are arguing over so many little things and mesmerized by so many trinkets, the net even now is closing around you and your children and your grandchildren and it does not cause you to fear. You will be isolated from society as has already happened. Anyone who tries to run for office who actually believes the Bible will be considered a lunatic until finally we are silenced. We will be called things that we're not and persecuted not for being followers of Christ but for being radical fundamentalists who do not know the true way of Christ which of course is love and tolerance. You'll go down as the greatest bigots and haters of mankind in history. So little by little the net is closing around and then it's not little by little. Look how fast things are going downhill just in a matter of weeks. Matter of weeks. But at the same time, know this, persecution is always meant for evil, but God always means it for good. And is it not better to suffer in this life, to have an extra weight of glory in heaven? You must settle this in your mind. This is the one thing I want to say over and over. Do not believe, down through history, you have a wrong idea of martyrdom and persecution. You think that these men were persecuted and martyred for their sincere faith in Jesus Christ. That was the real reason, but no one heard that publicly. They were martyred and they were persecuted as enemies of the state, as child molesters, as bigots as narrow-minded, stupid people who had fallen for a ruse and can contribute nothing to society. Your suffering will not be noble. So your mind must be filled with the Word of God when all people persecute you and turn on you. And if the Spirit of God in common grace pulls back and you see even your children and your grandchildren tossing in the lot that you should die. This is no game. You want revival and awakening, but know this. For the most part, great awakenings have come only preceding great national catastrophes or the persecution of the church. I believe God is bringing a great awakening, but I believe that he is raising up young men who are strong in trust in the providence of God to be able to wade through the hell that's going to break loose on us. And it will be on us before we even recognize it, unless, unless in God's providence, he is not done. He is not done. 
And no, this is, this is not silly talk. Apart from a great awakening, these things are going to come upon you. Be ready to lose your homes, your cars, and everything. And uh, what I realize is that the body of Christ is being tested more now than ever before. More now than we've ever been being have, have ever been tested before. Well, I mean, the Bible says the body of Christ is always being tested. We've we've always been tested. Um, God tests us to uh, bring out our true faith, uh, our true uh, commitment, our true um Holiness, uh, our true righteousness. Uh, Peter writes about this, that uh, these persecutions bring about holiness and, and righteousness in us. They, they make us more like uh, Christ, the one who saved us. Peter writes about this. James writes about this. Paul writes about this. John writes about this. Uh, the New Testament is, is, is full of writings about that, that the church of Christ is continually tested uh, here on the earth. In fact, that's why we're here to be uh, tested. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's how we're sanctified um, through through testing. So agree 100 percent with you there, uh, doctor. In the area of the supernatural. Well, it is a supernatural uh, act of God uh, for us to be made holy. I mean, that's not something you can go get at Kmart. Just go buy yourself a box of holiness and take it home with you. It's not something you can get here in this world because this world is not holy. Uh, holiness comes from the Holy One who is separate from the world, uh, God himself. So, yes, to fight sin and to be righteous here on the earth um, takes a supernatural act of God. And if you don't think it does, then you know nothing of God, you know nothing of the earth, you know nothing of man, you know nothing of sin. In fact, the church is going to have to be a supernatural church now more than ever. And I'm not just talking about healings from headaches. Oh, you wouldn't happen to have an aspirin the size of a bus, would you? I'm not just talking about somebody sitting in the chair and their legs growing out. I'm not talking about parlor tricks. I'm talking about the fact that we're going to have to be able to demonstrate the power of God in a way that we've never uh, been able to do it before. Well, now, the Apostle Paul, um, writing to the church uh, in the first century, Romans chapter 1, said the gospel of Jesus Christ is, is the power of God unto salvation. And then he, he writes that whole letter um, talking about what the gospel does, what it is. Uh, what it affects here in the lives of uh, those who believe it. And he talks about um, justification, sanctification, and glorification, that the bedrock of the, uh, the Christian faith. Um, and it is the power of God, he says. It's, it's the power of God that justifies us in his sight. It's the power of God that sanctifies us here um, on the earth. It's the power of God that brings us to him to be glorified together with him in glory. Um, I, I don't understand. Like, like, the, like, can, uh, this guy's saying, like, uh, like, what? We haven't had that, or what? You know, Paul didn't say anything about no, no other kind of supernatural work or anything. I just, I don't, I don't know what you're saying here. Uh, see, this is why I didn't share it <laughs> when you told me to. I, I wanted to hear, you know, what you had to say first. And not only that, but especially in the area of healing. Healing is, is the children's bread, and God wants us to believe in the healing power of Christ again. Well, now, see, that's where you're wrong, because we're told that Christ is our, is our bread from heaven. He is the children's bread. Uh, we partake of him. He is life um, for us. But uh, the prophets like this, they, they don't like that bread. They're like, what, that bread? What, just Jesus? You kidding me? That's all? Uh, they despise it like the children of Israel did um, in, uh, in the wilderness, you know. This manna from heaven, we despise it. We loathe it, you know. We want healing. We want stuff, you know, like they had back in Egypt. That's what they said, man. They had, they had good stuff in Egypt, man. And all this kind of good stuff. All we get is this loathsome manna, is what they called it.
yeah, some believers like that. They 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 don't care for the bread of Christ. They need uh, the bread of healing, the bread of uh, breakthrough, the bread of prosperity, the bread of uh, you know um, signs and wonders and, and things like that. Yeah, go figure. He wants us to believe in healing again. God wants us to believe in in healing again. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So what? Like. Like, does he want us to believe in his son? Like, the, the bread from heaven? Like, what? Like, like God looks down on his church where the Holy Spirit is effectuating righteousness in their lives, the righteousness of his son, to where we are um, a proper reflection of him, where, you know, when God the Father looks at the son, we're in the son, so he doesn't see us, he sees the son. But when he looks down here on the earth, he sees uh, us being like his son. Right. Uh, we're behaving like his son, acting like his son, working out his son's righteousness here on earth. Now, now are you telling me he looks down and sees us doing that, um, obeying the son, obeying his word. And he's like, yeah, you know, this is no good. This is no good at all. They're not believing in healing. They're not like, uh, you know, praying gold teeth into people's mouths and things like that. Like, like, are you telling us God is disappointed with us living sanctified, holy lives here, obedient to his son? That he's like, yeah, y'all aren't getting it at all. You're, you're supposed to be, you know, uh, flying around and um, freezing things and, and doing superhero stuff, you know? That's that's what he's saying. That's what they all say in the NAR, the, this type of thing. He really wants us... To believe in healing again, we need to believe in healing. It is the children's bread, but we need to be really believe in it. I'm, I'm not talking about mentally. I'm not just talking about mental ascent. I'm talking about in our heart and in our in our in our spirit. It really deep down in our spirit. You see, Jesus never told us that. None of his apostles uh, told us that. We're here trying to obey Christ uh, here on the earth according to what he told us. Now, are you telling us God is looking down and seeing us doing that and going, yeah, this is no good. You guys are supposed to be believing in healing like right down in your spirit, you know. Uh, I don't believe that. I don't believe God is displeased with us obeying his son. Maybe it's just me. And uh, dear brother of mine, we were talking about this. I believe that the healing revivals that were in the 50s and the 40s um, and even going into the 60s that we're about to see that emerge again but even on a greater level now is he talking about 80 40 50 and 60 or or what what is he talking about here yeah he just we need that bread you know the bread that spawned this mess that he's uh that he's engaging in here uh, th this is not uh, biblical. This is not even a biblical uh, concept that he's teaching here. The church is never told, never told that we need to like push into the supernatural or believe in the supernatural in that sense and that believe that we can do all these kind of things that are mentioned in the Bible, that we can uh, pray people's legs longer and uh, that we can um, pray down gold dust and all this stuff, all these superpowers that these people have or they say they have. We are never told that. Never. Not one single time in the New Testament. Never. Uh, we're told to believe in Christ, to believe the gospel of Christ. We're told to repent of our sins. We're told to obey Christ. Uh, we're told to love our neighbors. And, and, and that's it, really. I mean, that is what God wants us to do, uh, to just simply do what Christ told us to do. Um, I, it doesn't say anything about anything this guy said or any of these other people say about, you know, all these supernatural dimensional exploits and all these kind of things. It, it doesn't. Take uh, just one passage in, in uh, Titus. Uh, Paul writing um, to Titus, who's a pastor. Now, uh, the apostles are leaving. Uh, now we have pastors, right? And... Uh, Paul is writing to this pastor, Timothy. He says, this is why I left you in Crete, so that you might put what remained into order and appoint elders in every town as I directed you. If anyone is above reproach, the husband of one wife and his children are believers and not open to the charge of debauchery or insubordination. 
Now, he doesn't say go out and find somebody who believes in the supernatural and believes in these powers and these healings and things. He says, for an overseer as God's steward must be above reproach. He must not be arrogant or quick-tempered or drunk or violent or greedy for gain, but hospitable, a lover of good, self-controlled, upright, holy, and disciplined. There's that word holy again. He must hold firm to the trustworthy word as taught the scriptures so that he may be able to give instruction in sound doctrine and also to rebuke those who contradict it. For there are many who are insubordinate, empty talkers and deceivers, especially those of the circumcision party. They must be silenced as they are upsetting whole families by teaching for shameful gain what they ought not to teach. <clears throat> So Paul here, in talking about a, a pastor who is who is supposed to shepherd God's church, now, I don't know who this guy thinks he is. He, he's out there saying he's got messages from God to the church. Well, here's these God-appointed pastors of churches, and Paul doesn't say anything this guy here, uh, this doctor is, uh, is saying. He never says anything this guy that this doctor is saying. No writer of New Testament scripture said that we ought to be people who pursue the supernatural. We ought to pursue righteousness, pursue the faith. Remember, must hold firm to the trustworthy word as taught. The faith. This is what the apostles teach us over and over again, that we must hold on to the faith. And, and this is what Paul says to do to these people. It says, therefore, uh, rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith, not devoting themselves to Jewish myths and the commands of people who turn away from the truth. To the pure, all things are pure, but to the defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure, but both their minds and their consciences are defiled. They profess to know God, but they deny him by their works. They're detestable, disobedient, unfit for any good work. So this is what we have here. This is the faith. This is what we believe. This is what we practice, the faith. And this is what we do until he returns. This is what he told us to do. This is what Christ told his church to do until he returns, uh, to live out our faith here on the earth, uh, to practice goodness, holiness, righteousness, to obey Christ here on the earth, to obey his words. The trustworthy word is taught, the faith. Um, and we do that until he comes. But now, uh, Christ and all the apostles told us that in the last days, people would come performing signs and wonders. All about the supernatural, see? And you've got men like this here who are just setting people up to be looking for that kind of thing. But we're never told to look for signs and wonders, not us. Because our faith is not in signs and wonders. Our faith is in the trustworthy word as taught. So when these false prophets come with their signs and wonders, and maybe they're here already, you can have a whole bunch of people believing that that's what they're supposed to be looking for. But we are not to look for signs and wonders. In fact, uh, the Bible is very clear. Signs and wonders in the last days are for deception. They deceive people. Only those who have held fast to the trustworthy word of, as taught will be saved. And um, that's a fact. Because it won't just be healing. It'll be miracles. It'll be the supernatural. It'll be the power of God. The gospel, that's the power of God. Salvation, that is the power of God. It's a supernatural work of God. Um, it is really. Um, but, you know, it's not enough for some people. It's really not. There's got to be... There's got to be the other stuff. The good bread, you know. Not this detestable bread from heaven. But, you know, the, the good stuff... It's got to be the good stuff, the stuff with all the icing on it and the and the sprinkles and things, you know, that that's really what they want. Um, Christ, his gospel is just just not enough for them. Just just not enough. And so one of the things that I want to do is um, years ago, I wrote a book called The Healing Handbook. An Essential Guide to Healing the Sick. I've never really marketed that book. I've never really shared much about it. If you go on Amazon, it's there. Ah, here we go. Now we're getting to the heart of the matter. It's just like Paul said of these people. They were insubordinate, uh, rebellious, against the trustworthy word is taught, against the scriptures, empty talkers and deceivers. 
uh, says they're upsetting whole families by teaching for shameful gain what they ought not to teach. And what you ought not to teach are things that God has not said. I mean, that I know that goes without saying. It used to go without saying. Uh, but apparently, you know... <laughs> since the 40s, 50s, and 60s, where we had this big revival of, uh, you know, the trustworthy word as taught, <laughs> uh, things don't go without saying anymore. Uh, you have to say what's obvious. When you've got men like this running around with their dreams, with their rebellion against the word of God, with their books for sale, yeah, you, you have to say <laughs> everything. Can't take anything for granted anymore. This is not the time to be taking anything for granted. This is the time to be holding firm to the trustworthy word as taught. It's only going to get worse. It's only going to get worse. But that that tool is something that I believe is so necessary for, for today. That tool, his book, is necessary uh, for today. Uh, Paul said the trustworthy word is taught was necessary, but... You know, what did Paul know? Because we need, and in fact, uh, about a week ago, the Lord brought me back to it and I start reading the healing handbook. The Lord came to him and said, uh, hey, you need to go, <laughs> you need to go read your book. Yeah, the Lord didn't say that. The Lord didn't say that at all. Uh, if the Lord wants us to read, he wants us to read his words. The Lord prefers that we read his words, really. I mean, he really prefers that we read his book because it's the best book. It's the book that contains the words of God. So God is speaking to him and he says, hey, buddy, go read your book. I think you'll learn something. <laughs> Yeah, th this is no good. This is no good. I I'm glad I didn't tag anybody and share them with this because... Uh, uh, you know, this this would have been quite embarrassing and could have possibly upset a whole family uh, and would have been dishonoring to God and his word. So, uh, yeah, I, I made a good call on that one by not tagging it and sharing it.